Hi everyone, Molly Oyua here with Sacred Fire Creative. I'm super excited to bring you Serana Blackfoot today. And we are having all sorts of fun. She's having a little bit of technical difficulties. So it, hopefully you guys can hear us. And she's in her car. That's how committed she is to <laughs> promoting Brill Conference and telling you all about it. So um, let me just, I'm going to read what we have here for those of you who aren't uh, right on Facebook and who are catching this somewhere else. So Brill is Business Resources for Inspiring Leaders. And this conference was born from a desire to bring together women business owners with the business experts and the community resources that can help them design the business of their dreams. The founder, Serana Blackfoot, is passionate about teaching women to create, preserve, and transfer their wealth. Brill is the first factor of the equation. The best part of Brill is the moment an idea lights up one of the participants opening their mind to new opportunities and ideas that will take their business to the next level. With a mix of local and out-of-state experts on stage, Brill is the perfect combination of something unique to the Richmond area, Richmond, Virginia, and the business community coming together to up-level women-owned businesses. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarana. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's Thank see. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. I'm so excited. So, um, you know, obviously I read your intro, read a little bit about Brill. Um, for those of you who are watching, thank you so much. I already saw some hearts and um, definitely like press your hearts and write in the comments if you have questions. We'll make sure they get answered live, hopefully, and then hopefully afterwards as well. So, Sarana, what what do you want to share today about Brill? What do you, I mean, for somebody who like really hasn't heard about it, what is it? Why do they need to come? So Brill, um, as you mentioned in the intro, was born out of a desire to teach people how to grow their business. I've been self-employed for many years, and I know a lot of women that started their own business, whether as a self-employed person working for a bigger company or um, trying to build their own company, their own brand and everything. And one thing that I notice a lot of times is that they start the business because they're passionate about whatever it is that they want to provide, whether it's a product or a service, but not so much because they're passionate about having a business. So a lot of them are not interested in the business aspect, are interested in giving back, in helping others, in providing the best service or the best product, which is all great, but it doesn't keep the business growing unless you know what you're doing from a business perspective. So I'm a little bit of a business geek and I became very interested and passionate about learning all of those things. And I decided to start Brill out of a little bit of craziness and a lot of good intention and big heart um, together with a group of friends that have been helping me. So that makes it a little bit less crazy um, because I want to make sure that the women get more information about the business side of their business. It's great to do something out of passion, but you have to mo make sure that you monetize it to the point that it can live throughout your life and also beyond it because you have to have some sort of exit strategy. I mean, your goal when you start a business shouldn't be that you're going to work until you drop dead. Um, if it is, uh, well, then I'm sorry, this is not for you. But if it's not, then Brill is designed to help you figure out how to get all of that done, how to make sure that you can one day retire, how to make sure that maybe you build a future for your kids or you sell your business to somebody else or whatever it is that you decide to do um, with that business. Because even if it is a passion and even if it is because you see a need in the community, you're not necessarily passionate about that, but you're passionate about resolving that particular need, not the product or the service that you offer. Um, it's still something that you shouldn't be doing until you die. You should still have some life left beyond the work, beyond the business. So if that's the case, then we're here to help figure out how to grow, how to scale, how to explode your business, how you can be today one person, maybe next year five people, and maybe in two, three years, 100 people. Whatever your goal is, whether it's to make a million dollars in sales, whether it's to retire a millionaire, whether it is to give jobs to 100 people, whatever the goal is, you can build it, but you need the information. So 
we're here for the information and we're here for the community relationships and engagements. So we bring together different organizations from the community, different companies that help businesses grow in some way, shape or form. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. So I feel like, um, so this is a real need in not just your community, but you know, I've seen it time and time again. And so I just love that you're bringing it to your hometown where you are. And can you tell me a little bit, like, when did you start this? Was this, is this the first year that you're doing it? Can you tell us uh, what has happened before? So this is the second year that we're doing it. And um, part of the idea was to build a brand about it, right? We, you're in marketing, branding, you know, all that is important. You have to think about it being big, even though it's not right when you start. But if you start it and then you decide to change it, then it's more complicated because people expect something and now it's something else. And then you have to retrain everybody on what it is. So when we decided to do this, I talked to a couple of friends and I said, this is my idea. Give me your feedback, give me your input, and this is kind of what I have in mind. And then as they were asking me questions, as we were talking more and more, we discovered a few things that were really, really important to me and that I wanted to have as signature factors, if you will, out of the Brill experience. Uh, one of those was that um, I wanted it to be all about business. I believe that there should be life and business balance. I believe in work hard, play hard. I think you should spend time with your family, kids, and all that. But I just didn't want Brill to be about that. There are lots of women conferences all across America, in Richmond even, that focus on taking care of yourself and um, doing your meditation and your yoga and buying beautiful things and all of that. And that's great. I'm not putting them down in any way, but... I just didn't want me to be a me too type of thing with that. Um, for me, the business aspect was important because I feel that that is something that women a little bit shy away from. So I wanted to make sure that we touch on some things that they may feel a little bit uncomfortable about, but are willing to at least listen and start thinking about because maybe there's some truth in this crazy woman speaking on I got to focus on the business and I got to make money in my business. No matter how much I love the business, it still can be all about love because it's not going to pay the bills. So I decided the number one thing was that everything had to be about business. And that's why all the women that come on stage have to have had some success in business and know, really know their field. And so far, everybody's owned the business or is currently a business owner. And that's part of what I'm interested in maintaining. It may change down the road as we grow. I don't know. But that's part of what I want. I want people that have built something in that field of expertise, whether it's a whole business, whether it's um, a department within a bigger business, something. So that way, when somebody in the audience says, hey, by the way, I have this particular challenge and I'm a business owner, they can relate. Because it's not just about what's in the books. Go to college for that. You don't need to spend a day with me. Go to college. They're not going to teach you any street stuff. They're going to teach you the book stuff. And that's cool. Then you can come and learn the, the real thing. Um, <laughs> but that was part of what I wanted. Um, the other important thing when we started for me was to bring together women in the community that are known for speaking and that speak and are, are experts in certain areas but also women from other states, especially women that have never spoken in the Richmond area. I go to a lot of events, a lot of conferences, and I just didn't want people to feel like, well, why should I come to your conference when I see the same person speaking you know, down the street or next week or whatever? I wanted people to feel they get something unique. They get something that they don't see every other day all over town. So that was part of what I wanted. I'm very, very blessed to have the e-women at work community, my EWN sisters that have come. Last year, I had two of them come. Um, this year, I have two of them. They're all platinum sisters and love you all dearly. And they came and they know what they're talking about. They can say, hey, follow me because I've been in this for so long and I know what this feels like and hang in there and just do one more thing and all of those things. I, I want that. I also want to expose other people to my tribe that I don't know so well or are not related with EWN where I, we've grown to know each other over the years that we've connected and we've stayed in touch and all. 
And so last year I had a lady out of uh, Baltimore who is a CPA um, talking about the type of um, documentation you should keep for your taxes. It's not about teaching a business owner to do their taxes. No, talk to a professional because they can do a better job and it's less headache for you. But you still have to keep good records because otherwise that professional can only help you so much. So she came and talked on that, why she was important to me. Not that we don't have great CPAs in Richmond. Of course we do. She comes with a 13-year experience as an IRS agent prior to this life as a CPA. Mm. So she can speak, okay, if they knock on your door, this is what they're looking for. This is what you need to have. And that's what I wanted. Um, this year, I have Tawana Williams that's coming up from North Carolina. And um, if there are people out there that haven't um, seen her or heard her story, um, she is just she's just worth it for the whole day just to come see her because her story is amazing and her um, message is so powerful. The first time I saw her, I was crying my eyes out and I'm not going to tell you why. Just come see her. You might cry too, but it's all good. And at the end of the day, I figure, well, what's wrong with me? I got to fix this. I got to do something. So I want people leaving there. And this is the third signature thing that I am very passionate about. I want people leaving there with the plan and the idea to do something. One of the things I don't like about conferences is when people come out and say, oh, it was great. I learned so much. And then you see them next year and they say, oh, it was great. I learned so much. Okay, what are you doing with it? How are you going to use that? How are you or how is your business going to benefit from whatever that material was, whatever those connections that you made, whatever you learned, whatever new ideas that came to your head as you are listening to the speakers, what are you doing with it? Mm -hmm. And that's Tawana 100% because she talks about her experiences and at the end she basically tells you to just go get it done because there's no reason why you wouldn't. Um, so I want somebody that powerful to be the person that leads people out the door at the end of the day because it's just so much information that I know a lot of the people will be overwhelmed. I know a lot of them will feel like, oh my God, this is great, but now what do I do because my head is like this big. So I want somebody that says, okay, pick one thing, pick two things. And you can do 10, just don't try to do them all at the same time because it's not going to happen. But pick one thing first and do that thing and do it well. And let's just get the ball rolling. And ultimately what my dream is, hopefully in a couple of years, but it may take more than that, I would really like people to come on stage and be able to say, hey, I came to Brill last year, I came to Brill two years ago or three years ago, whatever. I learned this and then I went home and I did it, this with the information I got and my business went from here to here or my business grew from a thousand dollars a week to a hundred thousand dollars. I don't care. Whatever that growth is, I want people to come in and feel that it's, it was worth it, that they got something out of it, that they actually used it and it made a difference because I know that's how the family will benefit. That's how the community will benefit. And ultimately the whole country, because we're going to go all over the place and spend that money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love this. I love that you are very strategic about what you wanted, that you have three very clear pieces to your signature event. Um, I just did a training on signature events that make your market <laughs> memorable this morning. And so we were talking about things like this. And um, I'm wondering, can you tell us a little bit more about who's attending? So are they startups? Are they moms? Are they just anybody in the Richmond area? Are they driving in? What's what's going on with that? How far along are they in their business? So typically, we're going to have people under 10 years in business, most likely under five. Some people may be in it longer, but maybe it was just a side thing. So they weren't really, really 100% focused on it. Um, my goal is not to target a special um, demographic like moms or people between such and such age or something like that. But it's more so to target people that have a business or are thinking about a business and are maybe a little bit stuck. And they want to make more money or they want to scale in some way. They just haven't figured out what that looks like for them. And maybe they're looking for that one idea or uh, one piece of information that they're missing. That once they put it in place, 
their business is going to explode. And that's who I feel I can influence the most and I can help make a difference for. Wonderful. Wonderful. What, um, so you did this last year and I know it's been a long time, but you know, you're the founder of this. What would you say are like some of the key takeaways from last year's conference? I realize you have different speakers now, um, but we haven't seen them yet. So, you know, what is something last year that you could share with us? So the first speaker we had was uh, Kelly Lucente. And um, if anybody can look her up on Facebook, um, her business is called Brand by Kelly. She is a branding expert. She is out of Minnesota. And it was her first time in Virginia, not just in Richmond. So I felt really, really good about being able to introduce her to my tribe here and for them to actually be able to hear her. And I know we have marketing and branding experts here locally as well. But I also believe that when you hear it from somebody else, it may be just a little bit different or just different enough that it sinks in differently. And her topic was um, personal branding versus company branding. Mm -hmm. And the point was that everybody has a personal brand, whether you want it or not, whether you like it or not. And she has a book called Moolaji. And in her book, she talks about um, your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And when I read that book, that was the one thing that really stuck with me. A few other things, but that was the one thing that would always pop up in my mind. Because you have to think about what do you want people to think about you or say about you when you're not there to tell them, I am this and I do that. And I'm this awesome and amazing person or business owner or whatever, mom, sister, dog lover, cat lover, whatever you call yourself, right? You, you want people to know you for something, hopefully something good, but it's, you want it to be memorable. So her point was, whatever you do, people are going to see and they're going to notice and know about you. And she had a ton of slides with a ton of different examples. And it was just amazing because everybody's eyes went like this. And at the end of um, her um, talk last year, People started buying their domain because one of the things that, they, that she talked about is buy your domain, whatever your name is, dot com, you should own it. And you're talking about key takeaway. Well, this stayed with me and it's in my head. I already had the domain prior, but I probably would have been one of those. I would have bought it right then if I didn't. Um, she talked um, to us about a story. Um, one of her clients that came to her, um, she, her husband had committed suicide and his brother Uh, blamed her for the suicide so he went and bought her name domain so her name.com and then she he posted this horrible things on the website so when she came and said she needed to build her brand and all of this and they discovered all of this there was nothing she could do about it because it he owned the domain so you can't yeah you can say well it's not true it's not me i didn't do it but ultimately that's what people will see first because it's your name.com So Kelly's point was go buy your domain, go buy your kids' names, domains, because you don't want somebody else to do something with it. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to build all of these websites if you have 10 kids plus you and the husband. Now you have 12 websites. You don't, but you own the domain so nobody else can put something like that out Mm -hmm. there that is not good for you. And I think that that was really powerful and people felt that really deep because she talked about the real thing. Like this happened, this Somebody did this and, you know, the way that things are now or identity stolen and all that. I mean, people start thinking more about this stuff. They, they weren't, you know, back when I was growing up, we weren't thinking about that. We, we didn't have even internet to worry about. But now people have to think about that. So her coming and saying that and, and showing an example and talking about that, I think that was really, really impactful for a lot of people. And I know at least five or six told me right at the end of that that they went during her talk and bought the domain. Nice, nice. So, um, you know, what's something that, what's a takeaway related to like their own businesses and, you know, not necessarily like domain or personal brand related. Um, What's something that like was a takeaway for you that you think like, okay, well, this still applies or this is something that maybe I've heard, but it's just so important for people to hear. Um, What's something that you can share with us? Um, so Sylvia, uh, another 
um, Platinum Sister out of Maryland that came in and spoke. She was our closing speaker last year. And um, she went um, last because her point was really, really good to kind of summarize everything. And she talked about how important it is to figure out what your idea is and then break it down into steps so that way you know what to implement. And she actually gave um, some handouts with um, paper that was divided into specific areas where you were supposed to write specific things that would all lead you from the idea to the actual thing that you needed to do, the action that you needed to take. And I think that was very powerful as well. Lots of people took notes and um, lots of people were excited and I got a lot of good feedback on that because it was something that they could go and apply. They didn't have to study further or do more research or anything. Yeah, I love that. And um, I really, I think that part of the reason you and I get along so well also is that you just like are really direct, you know, you cut to the chase, you're saying, okay, women need to be here, women business owners, because this is how they're going to build their businesses. And this is how you can do it, not only being at this conference and learning, but taking real action. So I think that that is a key. Um, I am going to go over here to Facebook now and just check to make sure that I haven't missed any questions for, for you. Um, but while I'm doing that and just checking, I want to ask you, what is, what's the most common question you get from women business owners, um, maybe who have attended Brill or not, but ones who are growing their businesses? What's like, what's the biggest question? What's the big, biggest issue that they have? I think that the biggest issue that I come across is them feeling that they're not really um, paid for their services at their actual worth, that they're struggling with putting a price tag on what they do because they're so passionate about it. Um, it's a feeling of, well, if I'm good at this and this helps my community, then I need to make it as inexpensive as possible so more people can get it because it's for their own good, which is all nice and fine. But as I said in the beginning, just doing it because you love it doesn't pay the bills. So um, to me, I think that's the biggest thing that they don't really monetize to the full capacity. And I'm not saying that you need to charge an arm and a leg because it depends on the value of whatever it is that you provide, whether it's a product or a service. But what I'm saying with that is you need to figure out how you can make more income, whether that means maybe having different levels of programs. If you're providing a service where you start with something low, um, then you go to something mid point and then you have some premium content and people can fit whatever um, it's in their budget or whether you, you keep it lower and you just sell more people, but you make sure that you can do that without overworking. What I mean by that is maybe you provide some sort of consultation where instead of doing one-on-one -on -one and feeling that, well, I got to charge, let's say 10 bucks a person. So my hour is worth only 10 bucks. Okay. Well, maybe you can still charge 10 bucks a person if you feel that's what you can sell. But instead of doing one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you have 10 people in the room. So your hour is not worth $10, but it's worth $100, right? So you just have to figure out what your comfort zone is because you are the one that has to promote it. But also, don't put yourself down. Don't devalue yourself. Figure out a way where it's still worth it for you, where you still make a decent amount of money. You still have good income that you take home to your family. Your family still has to come first. You still have to be able to pay your bills. But then also keep a price point that makes more people come into your business, into your company, because you have to scale somehow. And I talk to a lot of women that provide services. And my first question to them is, how are you going to scale? How many hours are you willing to work? Right? Because if you produce something, a, a product, right, a tangible thing, like I wrote a book last year. If I sleep and somebody in China goes online and says, oh, this sounds like a cool book. I want to read it and buys it. I don't have to do anything about it. I'm not writing it. I'm not printing it. I'm not shipping it. I'm not doing anything because Amazon does all that for me. So I worked on it for about six months. I wrote all the stuff, but then I'm done. But if my uh, money comes from me speaking to somebody, then how can I monetize that in a way that doesn't really kill me? 
doesn't burn me out, right? So whether that means I'm going to record myself speaking and I'm going to sell the recordings as a workshop or audio program or whatever, whether that means I'm going to transcribe some of the stuff, just get out of my head, put it on paper, write a book about it, sell the book, whatever way I can get it out there without me actually doing it and speaking to each single person, that's going to be the most valuable thing. And it doesn't mean I have to charge $500 for a book, but I can sell maybe 50 books at $10 and make that because once I do the work one time, I don't have to do it again. Right. So I think for me, that is one thing that I run into all the time because women think, okay, I need to make more money. I need more clients. I need more clients. Okay, great. But does that mean now you're going to all be buried up to here in work because you don't have time for anything else? Or does that mean you figured out ways to touch more lives, but without putting more of your time in it? Absolutely. I agree completely. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people, all, you know, they'll come to me and they just say, I need more clients or I need new clients or I want to get more of clients that I have. But realistically, it's like you said, um, you know, more clients doesn't always, you know, make a better life. So how can you actually grow and scale and do it in a way that is um, really adding leverage to your business? And not just um, not just one on one forever, and also adding the value in. So it's just a, a combination of those things. There's a big trend right now towards online programs and kind of a mix. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. So I have a program going on right now. It's called the Lucrative Brand Blueprint, and it's it's really a mix of online like Zoom trainings and then in person workshops and retreats. And so. Um, you know, that's one way that people can scale. And that's something that I've helped some of my clients do. So one of my clients is doing like an online workshop. And it's just purely video instruction. And then she's got her Facebook group. And then with that program, she had her first $10,000 day selling, you know, just online. Awesome. Programs. Yeah, it's awesome. been great. Yeah. And, and think about it, you have a $10,000 day for one thing. But how hard is it to make $10,000 on one product versus how hard is it to make $10,000 off of one client, right? So if you're trying to sell like that, let's say that particular program on a one-on-one -on -one thing and you still want to press it at that because you feel that's how much I want to make of it, how many people do you have to talk to before you can get that one person that agrees to give you the 10000 right? And how yeah. are you going to starve in between versus you package it a little bit different you still make your 10,000 because you get a bunch of people that give you less than 10,000 right because it's easier to make that sale definitely i know that um you know in my in my business workshops i talk a lot about the business model and making sure you have a business model that is scalable that feels good and that is going to be lucrative for you or that it has the possibility to be that way so that's a lot of what you're talking about um and i just i love that you're you're so focused on really providing value and helping women get ahead so that they're not just stuck in like that little like hamster wheel of I, this is what I do. So therefore I'm going to sell more of this and, and then that's it. So getting really past that. Um, so to, to kind of wrap up and I, and I mean, thank you so much for answering all these questions. And to me, it's so inspirational that you're putting on this conference. Um, do you have anything that you want to add? Um, I know you are inviting people who are watching to come to the conference. Um, right. you, you still have tickets available. Yes. Um, anything else that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? Um, so the tickets are online at brillconference.com, and that's going to be in the comments um, in the description and everything. It's B-R-I-L, just one L. Um, and why it's important to come, yes, it's about the value. Um, I, by trade, I am an investment advisor. I 
tell people don't waste your money. It's okay with spending money. Just don't waste your money. So I feel that I can't tell you that in good conscience and then turn around and say, well, give me some of your money, but you're not going to really get anything much back. Right. So it has to be value that's given back. Um, it's definitely not cost prohibitive because I don't want people to feel I can't, I need to grow my business, but I need, and I need to make more money, but I can't pay the ticket because I don't make enough money. So I wanted to make sure that the price point is something that most people can afford. Um, I mean, if you can't afford a hundred bucks to come to a conference where you can scale your business and make your hundred bucks right back, then you probably need the job and don't worry about building a business. Right. Um, so um, I want people to come because I feel that they can learn from experts that know their field and that can also relate to the um, women business owner status so they can learn some real life experiences that they can then apply. Number one. Number two, they can meet some of their um, women in the community that are doing the same thing. Maybe find that person that can be their accountability uh, body for the rest of the year so they can achieve whatever goals they set January 1st and then maybe forgot by March 22nd when they see us. Um, I want them to come also because my vendors and my sponsors are all companies that work directly with companies to help them grow. So they can find those companies and resources and community organizations that can give them whether exposure, whether professional advice, whether um, actual products or services that help their business improve, grow, scale, whatever they need in their business. So that's why they should be there because of the experts on stage, because of the people in the room, some of which will be experts and because of the sponsors and the vendors that are also amazing companies that can definitely help them. Wonderful. I, I love that you are growing your community and that you're really serving the women in your community. I'm super excited to be a guest speaker there. So I'm going to be coming to real. So anybody who's, who's watching, I did put the URL up on the screen. So it's Brill, B-R-I-L conference.com. And it's just up there. So you can go ahead and type that in and get tickets that way, look up the conference, look up who's speaking, um, and just know that, you know, Serana's putting this event on, she has a ton of integrity, and there's no way that you're not gonna get the value and get exactly what you need from this conference. Um, thank you so much for being here, Serana. I know you're in between things. You're a busy woman. You're in your car today. And so um, well, I'm coming from my actually a women lunch. And so I want to give a shout out before we go to the ladies yeah. in Charlottesville that may be watching this or maybe watching the replay later because I shared with them that I will have to rush back to Richmond to be on this call. Um, so we were having a women um, luncheon. It's called Wise Women. Um, it's a group run by a friend of mine there, and um, it's always a great group to be around. And I was telling them that I have to run over to Richmond to be on this call, and then I didn't make it all the way because my stop didn't work out. So it's okay. We got to talk, and this is kind of a road trip type of meeting, but that's cool. <laughs> great. Well, hi to the wise women of Charlottesville, too. And it's funny because I was just at a different wise women group yesterday that I meet with. And um, and then also before we leave, I want to say that um, for those of us who are in the Oregon area or who want to come out, I'm doing two retreats. They're two and a half days, Wednesday through Friday. Um, they go from 5 p.m. Wednesday to 5 p.m. Friday. And there's two of them. It's called Sacred Fire Marketing Mastery, the event. And it's a very intensive, customized um, retreat that's designed to up-level your business. So for those of you maybe who are watching, who are part of Brill Conference and who want to come check it out, let me know and I'll send you a link to more information. All right. Take care. Thank you so much, Serana, for being here. Thank you, Molly. All right. Take care. Bye, everybody.